I got booked in Philly, and uh, the promoters paid me to come through and just be in the club and just chill in the club and not do anything. Then he was like, hey, Payne, uh, we don't need you to perform. We just, you know, we'd be, it'd be cool if you can just grab the mic and say what's up to the people. Um, you know, if you can just get on the stage and just say what's up to the people. Um, so I got on stage. I said, what's up, y'all? We good? And then they started playing my music. And everybody was like, oh, shit, he about to perform. I'm like, no, I'm sorry, guys. The promoters didn't pay me to perform. He just told me to tell y'all what's up. I don't know if he told y'all I was performing or something, but nah, he, he didn't pay me for a performance, blah, blah, blah. And then they got mad because I told the crowd the truth. And the crowd was like, oh, these niggas again, because the crowd knew that these niggas were known for doing shit like that. So the crowd was like, oh, we, yeah, we understand. And these niggas got mad. So they gathered up all their homeboys and came to my hotel and was waiting on me outside my hotel because they got embarrassed because I told the truth to the crowd. Like I was supposed to protect their reputation or something. I don't give a f y'all niggas. Um, so they gathered up all their homeboys, came to my hotel and tried to like, like literally was trying to like beat me up and shit. <laughs> like because they got embarrassed. <laughs> but it, and that's happened a lot, but you know, luckily I took a private jet there. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna leave right now. It was like four in the morning. Four in the morning, just just gas up the jet, bro. Let's go. Let's get out of here, dog. Uh, but that happens a lot. That was just the one I can remember the most because not only were we were like we was like riding with these niggas' homeboys. They didn't give us a, they didn't get us a car service. They didn't get us our own cars. That we were just riding with their homeboys to the club and shit. Like so, <laughs> we all in the back. You know what I'm saying? They got us blocked in in the back of the club. So, you know the the one homeboy, the one the one sensible mother out of their whole group was like bro just come with come with me man i knew they was gonna do this shit man they told me they weren't gonna do this shit this time i knew they was gonna do that shit so he let us get in his truck this nigga took down the the light the light in his truck the the light on the on the ceiling he took that shit off and got a gun out of the f headliner <laughs> and was like i knew these niggas was gonna do this shit now they're gonna shoot up my mother truck well and like he drove us to the hotel we got all our shit they came to the hotel we told the hotel what was going on. The security stayed down there for that. We got out the back and went to the private jet and got the f out of there. So shit like that happens a lot, but that's where that's the time it happened the most. Like that time was like that was the time I was like they might they might they might got us this time because <laughs> they just they shit and they you know it's all their people and shit like that. So I was like damn they might they they might got us this time, man. One time I was in uh. I was, uh, damn, I was in England somewhere. I was in England, so I think I was in Birmingham or something. It was something like that, but I was uh, just doing another appearance at a, it was a strip club. It was the Spearmint Rhino. That's what it was. It was a rhino. Um, no, not even, it's not even that England story. That's how, this is how much things happen to me. You think it's a whole nother, that is the London story. When we got in the fight, that was fine. That was the London story. This is the, this is a whole different thing. I think this is Birmingham. So, we were doing we were doing an appearance at a spearmint rhino and all of a sudden shit just stopped everything just stopped the music stopped everything just stopped these, these a bunch of niggas just got on stage with the chicks and nobody was getting them off the stage so i'm like okay these guys must work here or something like that uh come to find out no they do not uh it was a local gang that came in there and they decided they wanted to start a tv show that month and um they heard t-pain was in town and t-pain's about to be on this tv show they wanted they want to start birmingham england <laughs> birmingham england so i ah, damn, that's a big that ass a big ass apparently oh, there's some gangs oh, there called oh, the burgers oh, oh, oh. or the johnny's one of them it was one of the one of those gangs um but yeah they wanted to start a tv show and t-pain was about to be the next guest and they don't give a f what it is these niggas had like they all had SMGs. I don't know what it is with their gang and, and SMGs. They had Uzi, um, fucking like the little Mac, the, the Mac 10 joints. Like they all had like little tiny SMGs. I don't know. I don't know if that's like a theme with their game. Like they, they gotta, they gotta do that. Um, but yeah. Uh, so they came in and it was like, yo, we need you to get on a TV show. We need drops. We need all this. And I'm like, well, as scary as getting shot is, um, I don't want to do that. <laughs> so, and i and i honestly don't think y'all gonna kill me because i didn't didn't get on your tv show you know it's just uh yeah i don't want to do that and it was like yo you're gonna do these drops you're gonna do these drops and they had people 
Because we parked in the alleyway, so they had people waiting in the alleyway to make sure we didn't get out of there. And apparently, they did the same thing to Jagged Edge, like, two nights before I got there. And Jagged Edge, like, did it. But I was like, nah, I don't want to do that. Not that I was, like, tough or anything. I wasn't trying to be tough with the with a, a gun uh, being brandished in front of me. I was just drunk, and I didn't care. <laughs> I couldn't come up. I was so drunk, I couldn't. I couldn't grasp the the gravity of the situation i was like i don't feel like doing that i came here to just look at these super skinny white girls and uh and get the hell out of here with my money and apparently they wasn't gonna let us leave because they had our trucks blocked off in the alleyway so we had i told them all right let me go to the bathroom real quick and i fucking i rick ross the shit out of their ass <laughs> i rick ross the i was like let me use the bathroom real quick i'll come back and do your drop bloop 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 front door hauling ass ran out that bitch me and all my niggas ran and thankfully we had got what what would be considered an airbnb because we was just renting somebody's condo thankfully that shit was like two streets over so we just ran to that spot and they had no idea where we were and they dumbass was still sitting in the in the club waiting on me to come back setting up cameras and shit <laughs> ah, you fucking idiots What's a typical walkthrough at a club pay? Um, yeah, it varies depending on the artist. Like a walkthrough for me, if I if I don't have to do any songs or anything, then fifty grand will cover it. But if you just want me to come and drink up all your liquor and just be able to say that T Pain was in our club, that's solid. Fifty K will be good. If I gotta do songs and shit, then it starts getting up in the seventies and eighties and shit like that. If I gotta like be in the DJ booth, you want me to do like buy you a drink and bartender and then leave, then yeah, that'll be like seventy or eighty. Cause then I gotta sweat. Cause I'm not gonna take it easy. I'm not just gonna get up there and just like most people do. I'm, I, I I don't. I, I'm I'm gonna tell the DJ to get the, the way I got this. Let me do my shit. I'm about to be sweating up this bitch. I'm a this sweater I got on. I don't know why I wear a sweater to the club, but here we go. 